Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are co-creating that day with God as we speak, as we sit, as we listen, as we pray, <clears throat> as we connect with one another. Remember, the truth is that when two or more are gathered in the name of the Christ, Jesus the Christ is present, is there. And we can experience that. We can experience that in this marvelous instrument of our bodies that convey emotion, sensation. We can do that through our intuition, look around the room, look into the eyes of each of us, the brothers and sisters in the room, and see that love of God coming back to us, creating a loop, a connection with the infinite. So this is the day that the Lord has made, and I welcome all of us. As we set, uh, set about our time together, I'd like to acknowledge the incredible work of firefighters and other first responders up and down the state of California as we go through our annual struggle with dry forests, lightning, and occasional arsonists. We bless their, the men and women for all their efforts. We know that it's a difficult job. The weather doesn't make it any easier. So we hold them in our hearts and we see them safe and successful. We thank you, God, for blessing our environment, blessing our people, and uh, keeping us safe and secure. So we like to affirm in our unity service the fundamental truth of all reality, that there is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. Would you affirm that with me? There is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Let's feel that. Whatever it is that we're feeling is the presence. And we expand our consciousness from our individual existence to that of this ministry, and we affirm there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. And this ministry includes our prayer box, and the intentions that each of us shares through the prayer box and uh, from the prayer box to silent unity for 30 days of daily blessing for whatever it is that our hearts are yearning. Maybe we're having a financial struggle. Maybe we're having a health challenge. Maybe someone in our family is going through a tough time. Maybe one of our pets is hurting. Whatever it is, we acknowledge the healing, the end of the problem, the end of the challenge through the healing power of Jesus Christ. And through the collective prayer support of all of us as focused in silent unity. And so we can expand now our awareness from our ministry to embrace the entire globe, 8 billion human beings, all individualized versions of God. We affirm there is only one presence, one power, one love enlightening our world today, God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love enlightening our world today, God the good, omnipotent. Just feel that. Drink that in, drink in the one presence, the one power, the one love. And as we sit and enjoy that truth, that sensation of God presencing itself in us, I'd like to share with us today's daily word. And it's so appropriate for what we've just gone through. The day's, the day's word is inner peace. And the affirmation is, the peace of God is mine to live and mine to share. The peace of God is mine to live and mine to share. Peace flourishes in my awareness of the divine presence within. 
flowing from my spiritual center, peace calms my emotions, clarifies my thoughts, relaxes my body, and radiates to everyone around me. If peace eludes me, I open myself to anything that may be blocking its flow and invite it to come forward for healing. If I am holding on to resentment or unforgiveness, I pray for the willingness to forgive, affirming divine love through me forgives and releases all bitterness. If fear and worry seep into my thoughts, I remember God is the only presence and power active in the universe, affirming faith dissolves fear and restores peace. I align my thoughts and feelings with God's indwelling presence to live ever more peacefully. And the scriptural, scriptural inspiration for today's word is from the 14th chapter of Romans, verse 19. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. The peace of God is mine to live and mine to share. The peace of God is mine to live and mine to share. Would you affirm that with me together? The peace of mine of God is mine to live and mine to share. Amen. One of the things I love about the daily word, I think we all love about the daily word, is it's forever appropriate to whatever's going on in our lives at the moment. Inner peace is always a beautiful place to be. And we can count on the divine presence within us to restore us of that whenever we find ourselves drifting away from it. And so let's affirm that in song. And I invite us to open our wings of song to hymn 21. Hymn 21. There is sunshine in my soul today. There's sunshine in my California day, and there's sunshine in my soul. I hope we feel that the warmth of that within. And this is now's our time for announcements, but I have none. Anybody, Catherine? Anybody got pronouncements to announce? All right, all is good. So then we're gonna move into our time of meditation and to prepare for that we'll sing some more I, I i love singing only we're going to slow the pace down a little bit become a little more contemplative 
we're going to open to number 40 in our Wings of Song. This is the one that all of us know pretty well, called, Oh, Fill Me With Thy Presence, Lord. This is a song to affirm that as we move into that meditation space, we're going to feel the presence of the Lord filling all of our consciousness. Amen. Thy presence has been given me to live and radiate. So I invite us now to become as comfortable as may be. If we need to, we can tighten our arm and shoulder muscles and then relax them. If we're in a sitting position, let's just keep our feet flat on the floor, maintain some Posture which we can relax into. If we're lucky and we're lying down, we can just relax into that. The presence of God fills me with joy, with health, with prosperity, with love. Whatever's going on in my home, my business, my relationships, my bank account, my world, the presence of God reminds me that I am safe. I am secure. There is nothing to fear. As the great Buddhist teacher says in the great title of his book, there is nothing to do, nowhere to go. In God, there is nothing to do, nowhere to go. Sometimes in our meditation practice, our, our mind may be dealing with the checklist of the things that we have to do and may even find, get impatient with the meditation. And so we can train ourselves to be present with impatience, to be present with the checklist. Because whatever it is that we're feeling, Whatever it is that we're thinking is God expressing as feeling and thinking. 
there's only God. <clears throat> And I am a fractal of God. I am an individualized expression of God. The divine and I are one. I invite us to affirm that silently in our own hearts. The divine and I are one. The divine and I are one. And as that is true, I invite us to contemplate our bodies as divine. Our bodies are an expression of the life principle, the infinite radiating power of God, the summation of all reality, of which I and we are a constituent element. You feel that presence of God and whatever is showing up for you. What do you notice in your mind, in your awareness? Whatever that is, let us affirm that it is God presencing itself as those sensations, those thoughts, those meanderings. Perhaps it's relaxation and utter ease and comfort. We affirm that that is God manifesting as relaxation utter ease, comfort. Perhaps you're outside and you notice the days warming up. You feel that warmer temperatures on your skin, that feeling of Warming is God expressing as the feeling of warming. And as we sit in the comfortable presence of the divine, what might it be that you would like to tell God? Have you had a chance this week to share your darkest secrets, your greatest fears, your highest joys with God? You can take this moment to do that. God is eager to hear from us because God is eager to hear how his expression is expressing. Let's take a moment now in the silence to tell God whatever it is it's on our hearts to share, to release, A 
as the daily word today suggests, perhaps we're in need of forgiveness. Perhaps we did something this week of which we're not that proud. Or perhaps we forgot to do something that we had committed to do. Maybe we missed an opportunity to praise someone, to comfort someone. Maybe we missed an opportunity to praise ourselves, comfort ourselves. Doesn't matter. Take a moment now to relax in the silence and share with God whatever it is that it's come to our attention that we would like God to know. These precious moments alone with God are the seeds of that inner peace the daily word speaks of today. They're an affirmation of our intimate connection with the divine, which is who we really are. So we take this moment to express our gratitude. Express our gratitude to God for creating us in his image and likeness, creating us like him, and for giving us the tools of consciousness to become aware of that. in both active ways, by claiming the truth, affirming the truth, and passive ways, letting go, letting God. Sinking into the loving arms that transmit their love to us and through us so that we too can transmit that love through ourselves to all those in our lives. So we learn to love our neighbors as ourselves. And for all of these gifts, divine presence, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, amen. So I invite us to stay in this state of contemplative peace and Harmony. While well, I share some thoughts, this is the traditional talk time of our service. And my talk today is entitled More About Loving Our Bodies. And a couple of weeks ago, our dear friend and founder, Phil Pearson, challenged us to take on a powerful new spiritual practice. He suggested that it is very important to our overall health that we affirmatively love our bodies. To do this, he suggested that we take on the practice of focusing loving attention on our physical bodies. One method, he said, is to regularly stop and take a look at our naked bodies in the mirror. We should do this with great tenderness, gratitude, 
and appreciation. And he said that many of us, particularly in our senior years, have an instinctive dislike of our bodies, generally because as we age, we lose the trimness, the vigor, the shapeliness, and the health of the bodies we had half a century ago. Subconsciously, we believe that there is something wrong, almost shameful with this fact. He reminded us that because the body and the mind are intimately connected, the body hears this expression of dissatisfaction and responds accordingly. Contrary to what we might carelessly think, the bo our bodies are not stupid. They are a highly evolved system of presence and engagement with the universe. They carry a special and unique wisdom. And further, as true students, we affirm that the body and the mind comprise a single system in each human organism, and that our physical health is an accurate reflection of our thoughts and feelings about our bodies and what they experience. The metaphysical Bible dictionary goes so far as to assert that, quote, the body is the material manifestation of the life principle. The body is the material manifestation of the life principle. Now, I must confess that I was one of those people that Phil talked about who, when passing a mirror with few or no clothes on, looks away. I think in part it's a form of the childish belief that if I can't see it, it isn't there. But the truth is that I did not like what I saw, so I stopped looking. Now, Phil helped to remind me that the unspoken message of this behavior is there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with my body. Now, the result of this thinking will inevitably be not only to weaken my body unnecessarily, but to undermine any determination I might have to proactively do what I can to maintain my health and fitness. So let me say right off the bat that I give thanks for the insights that Phil offered us that day a couple of weeks ago. That guy is not only amazing to be so sharp and engaging at his age, but he is also so generous to share with us the wisdom that he's accumulated through decades of practicing unity principles every day. And so when Phil speaks, I listen and I make a study of what he says. Now, I was speaking with one of our members earlier this week who suggested that she would like to hear more about this topic that Phil raised with us, about the importance of our physical nature and how to incorporate loving and improving of our bodies into our spiritual practice. So let me add a few thoughts on the topic that Phil has already shared with us. In the book of Genesis, we read two very specific claims about the creation of human beings. In the first chapter, we find this, quote, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In God's image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Now, in the second chapter of Genesis, we read about the formula God used to bring us forth into being. Quote, Yahweh God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So at the very beginning of the Bible, we discovered two essential truths about us. First, that God made us in his image after his likeness. And this fact is repeated three times in two verses. It's that important for us to appreciate. The second is that God created our bodies first and then breathed the life force into them. And as a result of this, we became a living soul. Now, are we to take it literally? that God created each of us, you and me, in his image and after his likeness? If that is true, then the body, which comprises the physical element of the human being, must itself be created in the image and likeness of God. So when we look at ourselves in the mirror, this reading of Genesis suggests we are looking 
at God. The Bible reading doesn't say, let's make the spirit of man in our image after our likeness. No. God creates the whole human being in our full essence of body, mind, and soul to mirror the creator's essence. So the essentially divine nature of the physical body is emphasized from the very beginning. And this teaching is carried over into the New Testament. The death and resurrection story focuses on the torture and demise of the corporeal Jesus. On the cross, on that lonely hill of Golgotha, Jesus gives up the spirit animating his physical body and he dies. After everyone is sure he's dead and gone, the few of his followers who stood by him during his final ordeal take the body down from the cross, wrap it in a burial shroud, and lay him to rest in a grave. And yet, and yet, when some of his followers returned to the grave on the third day, they found the tomb empty. And eventually, he shows himself to the 12 disciples, his body fully restored to life. Now, after spending a short amount of time with them, the Gospels of Mark and Luke tell us that he was, quote, received up into heaven. As Mark puts it, quote, and sat down at the right hand of God. Now, what further insights can we gather from these stories about the essential command to love and care for our bodies? I suggest that the New Testament stories fully reflect what we learn in Genesis. Our bodies, created in the image and likeness of God, are not merely prisoners of time and space. The resurrection of Jesus puts paid to that belief. There is divine essence in the physical world, and our bodies personify this. Our bodies are not mere dust, although they do comprise physical atoms and molecules, but they are indeed something much more complex and, frankly, mysterious. Now, St. Paul seeks to put his finger on this in the first book of Corinthians when he writes, don't you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Don't you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Well, what does that mean? My body, your body is a member of Christ. Well, to be a member of something is to belong to it, to be part of it, to identify with it. And a few verses later, St. Paul adds this clarification about this question. He says, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Well, I find this pretty blunt and straightforward. Our bodies and indeed our souls are not our own, for they are God's from the very beginning. They are God's because they came into being in his image and likeness by his hand. As true students, incorporating a veneration of our physical body into our spiritual practice deepens our experience of the presence of God. We know that the body, mind, and soul comprise one substance made manifest out of the divine idea of the human being. In the revealing word, our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore writes, the body can be redeemed only by man's taking it beyond the three dimensions of earthly realm and raising it to the fourth dimension. The earthly body is substance in its gross form and as such is still subject to the physical laws that operate in gross substance. But when the perfect ideas of life and substance are attained in consciousness, the perfect ideas are attained in consciousness, the three dimensions of mind, idea, and expression will be embraced in the fourth dimension of realization or divine mind. Then the same spiritual conditions will be found in manifestation as are in spirit and God mind. Now, Mr. Fillmore's observation here is derived directly from a metaphysical interpretation of the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus' body died in its gross form, subject to the laws of material physics. But before he died, he had attained, as Mr. Fillmore put it, perfect ideas of life and substance. 
And therefore, he both was resurrected and then ascended body, mind, and soul into what he calls the fourth dimension of realization or divine mind. And remember, the whole point of the New Testament from the perspective of new thought is to demonstrate that what Jesus did, we can also do. Now, all of this is extremely valuable to help lead us to the spiritual realization that Emily Cady speaks about in Lessons in Truth. It's important to internalize the terms of the divine reality in which we find ourselves. But as always, intellectual understanding can often be fool's gold, for the human mind has inherent limitations. It turns out, as the words from Genesis, the Gospels, and St. Paul are trying to tell us, that the body has powerful information and wisdom for us whenever we are willing to listen. For me, this is part of what Phil was telling us in his talk, which he called Love Your Body. Since in our physical essence, we are, as we heard in the metaphysical Bible dictionary, quote, the material manifestation of the life principle, end quote, by virtue of this fact, we are this medium of the life principle. Our bodies, therefore, know things about the operations of that principle that our minds of themselves cannot know. So let's consider ways that this works. First, our bodies affirm presence. We can only feel present in this moment through the sensations that our bodies produce. We don't need our minds to interpret or explain these sensations. We only need to rest in their manifestation. Now let's do this now as a reminder of this fundamental truth. Just as we did during the meditation, let's get quiet again. We let our breath find its own rhythm. We sit at ease, letting go of any material or mental distraction. We notice our bodies managing to breathe. We feel our bellies and chests expand on the in-breath and relax on the exhale. And as we breathe calmly and effortlessly, we may notice other sensations. We may notice, for instance, our heartbeat, or we may notice the room temperature on our face or hands. We may notice how our feet feel on the floor. Our bodies are instruments of presence. And as our bodies were created in the image and likeness of God, they therefore are the instrument of divine presence. Every breath I take is God breathing through and as me. Whatever sensation or experience my body generates is divine, is God sensing and experiencing through and as me. This is the affirmation. My body transmits divine presence right here, right now. My body transmits divine presence right here, right now. Will you affirm this with me together? My body transmits divine presence right here, right now. So this is the first fundamental thing to notice about our bodies. Secondly, our bodies contain all the information about both our physical and our emotional health that we need to know. They are the repository of all our memories, both, both conscious and subconscious. Everything that has ever happened to us can be accessed by listening to our bodies where that information is stored. Every ache, every pain, every twinge is direct information about the health, balance, and vitality of this miraculous physical form. A cough, a hiccup, shooting pain, dull throbbing, all have something to tell us about ourselves. For the most part, all we need to do is sit and focus on the sensation of pain or discomfort. This can have a physical source or perhaps it has an emotional source, or more often it's a combination of the two, physical and emotional. When I have the patience to sit and abide with the feeling, it's amazing how necessary information shows up in my consciousness. 
when I experienced that pulmonary embolism a couple of years ago, it started with a severe shortness of breath. Well, this was both unusual and painful, and I had no idea what was happening. So at first, I just sat down and attempted to breathe deeply. And as I did, the thought came, call the advice nurse. And so I did. And when I described to her what was going on, she urged me to hang up and call 911. Now, this may seem like common sense to you, but I assure you that my initial thoughts were that this was something that would pass, no big deal, just something temporary. But by sitting down and focusing on my body, focusing on the sensation, focusing on the difficulty of breathing, my body sent me the appropriate message, sent it into my mental awareness. The body keeps the score and is willing to share it with us when we ask. Thirdly, the body and the mind are full partners with each other in the manifestation of the life we are choosing to live every moment. It's no accident that, the that it was the body of our co-founder Myrtle Fillmore that got this whole unity movement going in the first place. Her struggles with tuberculosis, a pulmonary disease caused by certain bacteria that manifests a chronic cough along with bloody mucus, fever, night sweats, and weight loss, were the source of her insight that her body's symptoms were a manifestation of her thoughts about them. As we all know, she decided after a new thought lecture that her body and mind were in fact united in their essence, and that when she changed her thoughts about her health, her body would automatically respond in kind. So she set out to manifest this truth, this insight, prepared to do whatever it might take to bring it about. Now it takes a lot, as we know from her experience, of disciplined work to generate a shift in physical reality. As Charles Fillmore said, the body is substance in its gross form, and as such is still subject to the physical laws that operate in gross substance. Using mental energies to alter physical dynamics requires determined and relentless focus and patience, at least until we reach mastery. And so for two years, with grit and faith every single day, day after day, Myrtle focused on the cells of her lungs and other infected areas, affirming their health, their vitality, their beauty. She did what Phil suggested that we do. She looked at her body without flinching, seeing no disease, but instead seeing and affirming a powerful, resourceful, and regenerative organism responding to her loving attention. Every one of us has a body, is a body, that is the material manifestation of the life principle. Every one of us has a body, is a body, that is fully integrated with our minds and souls such that they all share the same substance. Every one of us has a physical being, is a physical being, that embodies the image and likeness of the creator. And so we come into this world with everything we need to actuate our essential being. It starts with the body, which God created first, before the mind, before the soul. It is our fundamental instrument of presence, it is the doorway to experiencing whatever it is that our hearts desire to feel, to manifest. So on this day, let us incorporate into our spiritual practice, as Phil suggested, regular loving attention to our bodies just as they are, affirming that they are beautiful, they are healthy, they are indeed the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as always, I like to close by affirming this in song, and I invite us to open our wings of uh, wings of song to hymn number 184, 184, and you will recognize the tune. We're going to sing the alternate words, I am the image of God, but it's the same tune as I am the radiant life of God. So I'm going to invite uh, Emin, if you would cue that up for us. We are going to sing affirming that we are the image of God.
And let's sing the uh, third verse. We'll sing the first verse on the third pass because there's only two verses of this, but there's three verses to the music. So we'll just reprise the first verse after we've sung the first two. Thanks, uh, thanks, Emin, for being on Johnny on the spot on keeping this music going. I really appreciate that. So we've come to the uh, time of our service where we share our prosperity with this ministry. And I invite you to take your virtual or your specific physical offering in your hand. And we just affirm that I give in love because I love to give. I give in love because I love to give information on how to share your prosperity. Now that we're in the Zoom room, uh, it comes on in the uh, weekly announcements of the service. And I invite you to take advantage of the various different ways that you can employ to share, share your prosperity. So the human body, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So we're going to bring our service to a close by uh, singing Love is the Only Power. And after we sing Love is the Only Power, I invite us to unmute the microphones and we'll speak the prayer for protection together. So Emin, one more time into the breach. Now unmuting, let us go forth knowing that the light of God surrounds us. Surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, Wherever we are God is and all is well. Yay. Oh, God. <laughs> Yay, God. Thanks, Thanks, Marty. Job, Marty. Thank you. Yeah. Good Thank speech, you. Marty. Thank you so Thanks, much. everybody. Love you. Thank you. I love Thank you, you ever so much. <laughs> love your bodies. Bye, everybody. <laughs> For sure.